Hello. Hi. Where are you? Hello. Alright, what's the story? What happened to my uh, PST? What happened to my PSD assessment? Do you still want it? Come here, I've been trying to get it for the last bloody two, uh, what, ten years? No, 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 no. I want it face to face. Okay. I want it completely face to face. None of this bullshit about all this video camera bullshit. Do you have any idea that I've got these bastards by the bollocks? Probably. Do you realize they're all going to prison by the time I'm finished? Yes or no? When, when will you be finished? I'll be finished when they're all facing criminal charges and I've got a Royal Commission inquiry on the table. Yeah. Well, a Royal Commission inquiry is going to put them all behind bars. Now, can, can you explain this to me? How was McGreevy able to get away with attacking someone who's a hero and using fear and violence? And how, how was it able to be left out of all those, the Queen's Council investigation report, Reese Tapsell's investigation report, um, even David Hoskin, even yourself? How was she able to leave out me saving people's lives? Can you explain any of that or no? How was she able to leave out me saving people's lives? Can you hear me or no? Yeah, I can. So how was she able to leave out me saving people's lives? Well, what pointed her in that direction? I pointed her in that direction. I pointed you in that direction too, but you, as usual, left it. Let it go in one ear and out the other. You just didn't listen, Dave, did you? <laughs> Reese Topsell was exactly the same. What's all the noise? I'm adjusting a saw. What? You're not tape recording? <laughs> Too busy for that. Too busy for that? Yeah. Right. So how do you how do you get fear and violence out of a person who has saved so many lives, Dave? Can you explain that to me? Right. So, so people's lives, and I'm the one who's risky and dangerous? How does that work? You saved lives. When did I save lives? When I, when I tracked down the hammer-wielding attacker, when he tried to kill the old man at the tube station in Goldhawk Road in, uh, in uh, England. And I put him away for 15 years. Which I told you about before. Um, and reporting it in Ireland when I was younger. Yeah. Right. Then there was the saving of two lives while I was in their fucking custody. Yeah. Do you understand me? Yeah. So... How do you get fear and violence out of someone who's saving lives? Now you were there when, uh, what was his name? The forensic psychiatrist at the Mason Clinic? When he said, oh, we know you told us about the knife and fork of the guy that was going to attack us. And uh, we appreciate that. You were there when he said it. Goodwin. But yet, he didn't put any of that in any of his reports. Why was that? Well, it depends who's paying the bill, I guess. 
No, it's nothing to do with it. The point is, is that here I am in their custody, saving two people's lives, in there for a psychiatric evaluation under false pretenses, and here I am diagnosing a fucking wanker with a mental illness, coming off fucking drugs, and none of that is in their fucking reports. Why is that? The moral of the story, Dave, is simple. They left out every goodness in my life to carry out their vigilantism and state terrorism that they carried out on my life. And you fucked it all up. Because you didn't give a shit. Did you? I'm going to get a Royal Commission of Inquiry out of this day. And there's going to be a lot of hard fucking questions asked. There's no question about that. Now why the fuck did you not contact me since uh, they put my name out in the public arena with threats to kill? Why did you get annoyed? Why did you get annoyed over a threat to kill the Prime Minister? Why did you not answer your phone? Why did you not answer your phone for nine months? Let's stick on track here, Pete, Dave. We're not here to stick off track. The damage is done, the fucking harm's done, and they ran my life as a slave trade action, and you were responsible for making sure my life stayed on track. Where's the rehabilitation? Where's the medical and treatment needs? Where was the address of being left with a neck injury in the back of a fucking police car? Where was the address of a police IPCA coming into your prison and saying, you need to learn to be quiet before you get yourself killed, comment. People don't like people who talk too much. You need to learn to be quiet before you get yourself killed. Where was the address of any of that? Nowhere in sight. So you got annoyed while my life has been murdered by these Nazi bastards. Are you fucking kidding me? No, it doesn't help. Dave, grow the fuck up, will you? Start smelling the roses and start facing reality. You fucked up. You let them get off the hook. You accept it them leaving the false declaration of my name out of the Queen's Council investigation report and as soon as you did that and went after the money you compromised me for a second time do you fucking realize that? you then tie it up in legal and political garbage over privacy acts and then I get charged 14% extra tax on top of their illegal unlawful with criminal intent actions and then the judges literally throw the case out and continually obstruct me and you did nothing about it did you ever take anything to the media in this case no you never why because your attitude was oh if you take it public you won't get any money do you think i give a fuck about money dave when did i ever give a fuck about money in this case this is about my life my freedom my sanity my health and well-being and my family and you're fucking, you're arguing about money? You're fucking, you're... I called you and called you and called you. If you had answered your phone in relation to Seymour, when I had to call him, I would never have had to make that phone call. I would never have ended up in a fucking prison. All you had to do was make that phone call. All you had to do was answer your fucking phone. But that was too hard for you. You were too busy, yes? Why is that? Because you were more important. What are you talking about? Are you talking about when you signed the agreement? No, fuck all to do with that. When Abacus said that I needed to call ACC, I called you a million times before I called ACC. And then when I called ACC, Seymour instigated a threat to kill against McGreevy that it would never have happened had you been the one who called him. But you never answered your phone. 
and I could never work out why did you not answer your phone? Again and again and again and again and again. You never answered your phone. So I had to ring Seymour and then Seymour goes, Are you going to kill Jeremy McGibby? Are you going to kill Jeremy McGibby? Are you going to kill... And I says, What the fuck are you going on about? That was my exact words. Are you fucking insane? So you see, this was all pre-planned to instigate fear and violence. Which, if you had made that phone call, I wouldn't have had to go through that shit. Which means I wouldn't have ended up in a fucking prison. Which means they wouldn't have tried to kill me while I was in the fucking prison. Which means I wouldn't have had to go through half the fucking shit that I went through. Do you understand that? Or, or am I missing something here? And you want to fucking talk to me about a couple of fucking grand? Get fucking real, Dave, will you? For fuck's sake, these bastards have fucking taken 90% of my income and my quality of life. And you're talking about the principle. The fucking principle. My life has turned into a slave trade fucking action and you're not doing anything about it. They use, what, five, six different names for case managers. You still haven't got to the bottom of that fucking one. That's a crack up, that one. The secret meeting of parliament. You didn't get to the bottom of that one either, did you? Anything else that I'm missing out on? And you want to talk to me about fucking principles? Fuck, you're a crack up. Dave, you all suffer from the same fucked up birth defect, you know that? No honesty, no morals, no ethics, no principles, no integrity, no logic, no reason, no common sense. Not a fucking half a brain cell between the whole fucking lot of you. Do you know the moral of that story is? You're all a fucking danger to society. The whole fucking lot of you. Dave, enjoy it because I'll tell you right now, there's going to be a Royal Commission inquiry in this case and you're going to fucking see the end of it. Believe me. Yeah, well now you, now you realize how fucked up you truly are. Seriously. You fucked up in more ways than one, and I paid the price for it. But more importantly, my children paid the price for it. So don't talk to me about fucking principles. Do you understand that?